A up there. We seem to be having some pretty crazy weather at the moment. I suppose it's a typical English summer. We've had thunderstorms every afternoon for about the last four or five days. And yesterday's thunderstorms certainly played havoc with filming, but I tried my best. Now, if you're my age or perhaps a bit older, during the 1970s, especially leading up to Christmas, we used to get these adverts for all these wonderful time-saving gadgets. They were usually just a collection of cheap bits of plastic with a few bits of metal. Things like the kitchen miracle. It liquidizes, chops, slices, dices and chips. It removes scratches from your favourite LPs and takes that fuzz out of your favourite jumper. And if that wasn't enough, it also makes a cup of tea and electronically answers the door. You know the sort of thing. They didn't really work, not really. And any time that you did save by using it was taken up by the hour and a half that it took to clean it and then pack it all away afterward. Now, it's not quite the same thing, but from my experience, most motorcycle racks fall into this category, sort of. Granted, the manufacturers don't make all weird and wonderful claims as to what this rack will do. They just sell it as a luggage rack. They put a lot of care and attention into making sure that it looks nice and they make sure that it fits the models of motorcycle that it's designed to fit. It only has to do one job. It has to carry luggage. And that's when its shortcomings come to the fore. Because they all generally design them in the same way. It's just a rack, the sort of thing that you would put burgers on on a barbecue. And they generally have the rails running from the front of the rack to the back of the rack. So when it comes to it, it's actually very difficult to secure your luggage safely in place. Because the straps that you're using slip along those rails. So you end up having to make all sorts of weird and wonderful sort of knots and loops to sort of get round that problem. So what should be a very simple task of securing your luggage down turns into a 10 or 15 minute ordeal and then for your entire journey you're worrying that you haven't got it right and that when you arrive at your destination your luggage will be gone. And although granted there are one or two exceptions it's like most manufacturers just set out to make the most useless luggage racks that possibly can. And the only conclusion I've been able to come to as to why is that they're not actually practical motorcyclists themselves. So they don't actually know how to design a practical luggage rack that works. Now I'm sure that there are a lot of experienced motorcyclists watching this video now that are nodding their heads in agreement and they all know that if they were asked to design a luggage rack they would know exactly how it needed to be in order to work practically. Now about six weeks ago Sam at Moton sent me a couple of prototype pictures of a rack for the Bobber Black. Well, not just for the Bobber Black, for all Triumph Bonneville Bobber models. The Bobbers are lovely looking bikes. They go well and they handle well, but they're not a particularly practical bike. I think most people just consider them to be a coffee shop special, but not all owners are happy to leave it at that. They want to be able to travel further afield. Some people even tour on them, so they're constantly looking for luggage solutions. Now it's important to remember that the photographs that Sam had sent to me were early stage prototypes that weren't the finished products. One feature that I did like was that they were actually rectangular rather than being tapered towards the back as a lot of manufacturers do, which tends to make them even more useless because it creates instability with your load and makes it even more difficult to fasten it down. Now Sam asked me if I would like to review it because he now had them in stock and they were up on the website and I sort of sidestepped his question because what I saw there was no different from any other poorly designed rack on the market. I'll be honest I just saw it as a fashion accessory. Now you know the arrangement me and Sam have. I review items for him and help him with prototyping here and there and in return viewers of this channel get a 12% discount. And by the way 
the discount code is still cactus and I'll leave it in the video description down below now despite this arrangement that we have Sam never puts pressure on me to review stuff he offers it to me and I take it or I leave it so no more was said on the matter until last week where Sam mentioned this rack again he also mentioned that he sold quite a few of them and although some people had fitted them successfully without any problems it was getting a lot of inquiries about the fitting procedure some people were unsure on how to go about it and he asked if I would put a fitting video together he also mentioned that he'd sent one out to me and it was arriving that day and sure enough later in the day there was a knock on the door a package from Moton I opened it and the first thing that came into my head when I pulled it out of the box was wow because in my opinion this is the Swiss army knife of motorcycle racks it's brilliant in fact I would go so far as to say if someone asked me to design a rack this is exactly how I would do it now what I hadn't seen on the photographs that it sent me was the fact that underneath there were some strap securing loops two on each side designed to engage straps of various widths and buckle sizes so that you can simply thread your straps through fasten them onto your luggage and nothing can slide backwards and forwards it's the perfect solution for quick and easy attachment of luggage this rack has been named the Voyager and the innovation doesn't end there at the rear of the rack there is a part that sort of kicks up now this is got two purposes one of those purposes is to help stabilize your luggage and stop it sliding backwards which is useful but that's not the clever bit the clever bit is this the bobber only has a side stand which means when it comes to chain maintenance really you need to get it up on a paddock stand but it's a single seater and when it comes to lowering it back down from the paddock stand there's nothing really available to hold on to so that you can safely guide the bike over onto its left hand side where the side stand is and if it goes over onto its right hand side that's going to be very expensive it's always one of those sphinctorial half a crown sixpence moments so Moton have specifically designed this to act as a grab handle for safe and secure guidance of the bike onto its left hand side when you drop it off a paddock stand which makes the whole process much less stressful and cuts down on your underwear cleaning bill now the rear mudguard on the bobber is the only logical place to be able to fit a rear rack because of the way it's designed it is actually immensely strong and able to take quite a bit of weight and although Moton did look at other ways of fastening these racks onto the rear mudguard they came to the conclusion in the end that the only safe way of doing it would be to bolt it onto the mudguard which means drilling holes in the mudguard and that's where customers have been getting a little bit nervous once they've actually received their rear rack now I understand this I really do it's a really alien concept drilling holes in your bright shiny rear mudguard but the numerous people that have already bought these Voyager racks obviously think it's worth it and actually it's not difficult to make a really good professional job of it all you need are a few simple workshop items that most of us have lying around the Voyager obviously comes complete with its own stainless steel fasteners all you actually need is a half decent drill two sharp drill bits and I'll get onto those presently some masking tape some degreaser or wax remover and some workshop wipes we're going to use the masking tape to mark the area that needs to be drilled and also to guard against any drill slips but you need to be able to make sure that you can stick that masking tape down firmly you don't want it moving around or coming off so the degreaser and wipes are really just there to clean the mud guard off before you start this job to make sure that you've got a good surface to stick your masking tape down to now if you don't wax or treat your paintwork in any way you may be able to skip that part 
But just bear in mind, there's nothing like getting halfway through a job like this and then your tape comes unstuck and you're no longer sure where you should be drilling the holes. You know what I mean. I shall leave that part to your discretion. When you've done that, have your masking tape handy and feel underneath the inside of the mudguard and you'll find some sort of corrugated strengtheners towards the rear of the guard now you don't want to be drilling over these parts because they're going to get in the way of where you need to put your fasteners so you need to drill your holes just in front of those towards the front of the bike now take your time over this you may have to sort of remove your tape and put it back on several times until you've found the right location in an ideal weld you need to be drilling the hole about half an inch in front of the strengthening part. If you move it too far forward, it's going to sight your rack at a bit of an odd angle. It is designed to slope very slightly, but if you sight it too far forward, it will slope too much and it'll look odd. Now, as I said, take your time with this and be prepared to sort of remove the tape and re-sight it several times before you absolutely happy with the location now i know a lot of people are going to want to reach for a tape measure or something for this job to measure everything out exactly believe me talking as someone that used to do this professionally when you're dealing with ribbed panels curves and swage lines trying to measure accurately on a job like this is a recipe for disaster. Moton have gone to an awful lot of trouble of making sure that the welds are precisely in the same place on every one of these voyages. And the central bar of this rack are designed to line up with that central rib on the rear mudguard. So this is a job where you should trust your own judgement, your fingers and your eyes. And if you do that, it's almost impossible to get this wrong. This should be fitted according to what I call the KISS formula. Keep it simple, stupid. Same applies when you're fitting those rubber knee pads on your tank. You know, I've seen people make a real dog's dinner of that job by just making the fitting over complicated. So, once you're happy with that back row of tape, place your rack in place and then work out where the front pieces of tape need to be using the fixing lugs at the front as a reference. Make sure that that central bar runs true along the top of that rib on your mudguard and then when you're happy that you've got everything sighted where it should be and that those two bars of tape are in the right place, mark approximately where the holes are just as a guide. And then it's time to move on to the next part of the marking out procedure. Then, using those markings as a guide, put crisscross bits of tape across those marks that you've made. And do this several times in both directions to build up a layer of about four pieces of tape where you're going to drill each hole. Now, I don't recommend using a centre punch to get your holes started with your drill on parts like this. You're likely to cause damage that will extend beyond where you're going to drill the hole, and that's not good. So this is going to require very careful use of an electric drill. And what I like to do in cases like that is build up quite a layer of tape so that if you do inadvertently slip, the chances of you going through that tape and damaging your paintwork are minimised. And full disclosure, I did slip on one of these holes and the tape did its job. So remember, ideally at least four layers of tape. Now, it might look slightly out of kilter here, but that's to do with the camera angle, not to do with the position of the rack. Unless you have a very slender pencil, take a 6mm masonry bit and carefully mark the position of each hole. Remember this time, you're measuring the holes exactly, so take some time and care and attention over it. Then remove the rack and, if necessary, with a pen or a pencil, just touch those markings up if necessary to make sure that they are clearly visible so that you don't make any mistakes when it comes onto the drilling part. Now, a lightweight battery powered drill is probably better for this job rather than a socking great big mains powered one. This metal is quite soft and with a good quality sharp bit you should go through it without any real hassle. So drilling this is more about precision than power. 
Now, the final diameter of the holes that you're going to drill need to be 6.5 millimeters, but I would recommend that you first drill a pilot hole with a 4.5 millimeter pilot drill. The reason being that a larger 6.5 is more prone to slipping than the smaller drill will be. So drill your small hole first and then open it out with a 6.5 millimeter drill bit. Take your time, don't put much pressure on it. Remember, there is a tire a couple of inches below that mudguard. So let the drill do the work and don't force it. If you really don't trust yourself, put a piece of wood or something underneath so that it hits that first before it hits the tire. I would recommend that you drill the two rearmost holes first and then offer your rack up to the mud guard. Insert both bolts and then inspect the front two fixing points to make sure that your markings still match up with the fixing holes in the bracket. If you've done it right, the should. If you haven't done it right, doing this gives you the opportunity to put it right before drilling any holes in the wrong place. And if you're happy that you don't have to make any more adjustments, remove the rack and you can go ahead and drill the front holes. Do not attempt to wipe away any of the drill particles after you've finished this part of the process. Blow them off, otherwise you will scratch your paintwork. If you've followed my instructions exactly, your holes will now be lined up correctly to accept your Voyager rack. Corrosion, I don't think, is really going to be an issue with these holes. They're going to be sealed very tightly with fasteners at either side. Although, at the very least, I would recommend smearing a good dollop of grease in that hole prior to putting your fasteners in. However, if you want to take every precaution possible and ensure an airtight professional installation, I would recommend just touching these up with some black paint and or using a little bit of wax oil to protect that tiny bit of exposed metal that's going to be revealed when you drill the holes. Now, I always have this high coat black gloss touch up paint to hand in the garage it's very handy when you get stone chips on frames etc you can if you like just touch in that exposed metal where you've drilled the hole but keep it very thin and leave it for at least an hour to dry before fitting your rack i'll see if i can find an amazon link for this high coat pin as i say it's really handy for small scratches and chips on your framework now it was using this paint for demonstration that actually tripped me up for filming with this job because by the time this was dry and I'd got on to actually fitting the rack it was thundering and lightning and an absolute deluge was about to begin. So I ended up having to rush and I wasn't able to film some sequences that I would like to have included. That is actually demonstrating putting luggage on it and how it works. I'll maybe have to do a separate video on that if people want to see it. Another product that you can utilise if you want to ensure that there is no rust in the future around these holes is use any of the wax oil products that are you know, freely available on the market. Again, I'll try and find a link and I'll leave it in the video description down below. Just smearing this liberally around the hole, making sure that it does come into contact with that bare metal will ensure that you don't have any future rust problems. This stuff is self-healing, so even if you push it out of the way and expose the metal when you put the fasteners in, it will creep back and continue to do its job. I used to use this in my body shop all the time. It is magic stuff. Once you've done that, just wipe away any excess and it's time to offer your Voyager rack up for fitting. 
First thing to do is to put it into place and then put your bolts in, inserting them from the top. In your kit you will also find an Allen key for these, along with four stainless steel washers and four 10mm aircraft type locking nuts in stainless steel. There is plenty of clearance between the mudguard and the tyre to be able to get these in pretty easily. And I would recommend that you use some grease to stick the washer to the nut as you offer it up on the end of your finger to the bottom of the bolt. Carefully get the thread started on each one with your fingers before going ahead and tightening them up. Now this looks fiddly but it's not, it's quite simple and straightforward. Get the thread started on all four fasteners so that they don't fall off and then you can go ahead and tighten them. Now when it comes to tightening, Moton have created a rather foolproof fastening system which is designed to ensure that no metal is damaged which may kick off any rust and it's an aluminium insert which is recessed into a rubber mounting part it's extremely important that you don't over tighten these and bring the aluminium part down so that it's in contact with the mudguard Otherwise, you're sort of defeating the trouble that Motor have gone to to ensure that everything is trouble-free in the future. Now, you will need to get a 10mm open-ended spanner onto that nut on the inside of your mudguard to hold it steady while you tighten the actual Allen bolt up from the top. Now, what I would say is tighten it up just to the point where the rubber starts to mushroom out very slightly and then stop. That will ensure a weather tight seal from the top and it will also make sure that that aluminium core piece isn't coming in contact with your paintwork but it will be very solid I assure you. Don't forget you've got an aircraft locking nut under here so as long as the thread has gone past the locking collar these fasteners are going nowhere. And once you've got all four fasteners snugged down, that's the job done. Now, I reckon with the way this rear mudguard is constructed and secured, this is going to be good for about 5 to 10 kilograms of weight at least. So, not only are you good for carrying your briefcase to the office for a bit of commuting, I do believe that in conjunction with those Motone pannier supports, you're pretty much set up for a bit of motorcycle touring. Because this rack now gives you the facility, or the option, of attaching some more conventional throwover panniers to the bike. I see this as one of those tortoise and hare products. Motone may have taken the time developing this part, they certainly are not the first to come to the market with a rear rack option. But that time in development has now resulted in them coming up with a rack option which is pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, the best on the market. This Voyager rack is made from 304 grade stainless steel. It's available as this black option that I'm showing you here. They also have a polished silver option, although I believe stocks are running low on the polished version now. I will of course leave a link to uh, Moton's website for these Voyager racks in the video description down below along with the 12% discount code which is CACTUS. Good grief, look at the time. I won't keep you any longer. Please leave a like and subscribe, you know what to do. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos. I sincerely do appreciate it. I am of course going to be back next week, so until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.